I'm the Model Officer and welcome to part 9 of How I Do Dioramas. So welcome back for episode 9 of the build series and today we're going to start bringing the elements that we've been building all together to form the church itself. Now I have been busy working away and already done some um, as you can see by this picture. So as you can see we've got our three walls attached to the roof section now with a couple of columns in place. We filled in the, the gaps etc that we've had and quite a lot fell in, still needs to be done. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I've achieved this so far. So you're going to have to bear with me, this is going to be quite difficult to show but that's our wall, that's how it's going to go in. And then obviously our column will sit in there as well. Like so. So let's crack on. So using the same glue as we have throughout this build, we're going to put some glue on the top of the wall, pop it into place, and when we're happy with some dress pins, we're going to pin it into place. Now remember that wood that I put across the top of the dome. What I have done is I'm going to put a pin through that beam straight into the top of the balsa foam just to give it some added strength. Got some glue on the wall and we're going to use dress pins just to hold it in place for now while we sort out the column. But what we need to do, because obviously that isn't quite where we need it to be, we're going to cheat a little bit. As you can see by here, by adding a little bit of balsa felt foam to the back, the back won't be seen. So, so again with the same glue, we're going to put our brace pieces in the gap, making sure it's given us a nice equal distance all the way along for our column to sit into. Again, using the dress pins, we're going to pin that into place to hold it for now until that glue sets. Making sure we pin both sides so we can draw in the two pieces together to help with that bonding agent. Again repeating the same process at the top and that way we make sure we've got an equal distance all the way along. Okay, so there you go, you can see we've managed to get our wall into place and we just need to fix our column now. So just going to glue the column in with some glue, just spot some glue down the two edges of the pieces, dropping the column in and then yeah, you guessed it, we're going to pin that into place. This is a bit tricky given the fact that we don't want to destroy any of the detail on the column or on the two pieces of the walls. So uh, take care, but a little bit of fiddling and you'll get them in where you need them to be. Okay, so there you go. It's glued into place now. Just have to let that dry for a little bit and then we can come in and put our capital stone on the top of a pillar and fill in just to show you the back. Obviously braced in, pinned in, leave that to dry. Okay, so we've allowed this to dry now and this is all fixed, our column's fixed. We need to get a capital stone in. Can take a little bit of fettling to get it in place.
There we go, we've got our capital stone in place. I'm going to glue that into place. And now we know what we need to do is just add a little bit more to this column, bring it down on top it's nice and neatly. So like I said, the next job to do is to add a little bit more to this column for the roof. And we have already prepared an extra piece. All we need to do is just measure, mark and cut. So there you go, we've got our capital stone in and we've finished off our downward column. Obviously going to need to do a little bit of filling, but I'm going to carry on doing that. Okay, one thing I've discovered while doing this, remember I said to you that no waste is bad waste. So try and keep hold of as much as you can of all your waste. One of the things in which is really handy is this, is the, the um, shavings when you sand etc. Obviously you get quite a lot of dust. Um, but save some of that because you can use it as a filler. Now, I'll pretty warn you with this. Um, when you add some glue to this, it does change the format, obviously, of the product. So you have to work with it very quickly and finish it off before it dries. Once it's dried, it is very difficult to do very much with. You can sand it, obviously, but remember if you're sanding it, then the balls of foam around the product the part in which you're sanding will also be affected and that will react to the sanding a lot quicker than this one so reason I point that out is because we've got a little gap here along our column and I just want to fill that in a little bit just so it looks a little bit smoother so how I'm going to do that is going to use the same glue I've been using for everything else I'm going to run a little line along the column So this technique is not for the faint-hearted. It is something that um, I would recommend you practice on a little bit. I still haven't perfected it myself. Making sure you clean up as you go along because we don't want that glue to dry in the wrong places. Once we've got the glue where we want it, you add some of the dust shavings into the glue mixture and then using your scalping tool, in this case one that bends around the column, pushing it into the gap. Try and make sure that you clean up as you go and as soon as that dust gets some glue, as I said it does change the format of it, so be very careful. So there you go, as you can see the gap's now filled. Still a little bit more to do down the bottom edge here. Okay, so now we've got our column, the column all filled in. We need to address the slight areas here. All we're gonna use is just some squadron white putty as you would use on any other model. Something to point out while using this putty is to make sure that you fill the gaps and don't leave too much excess on the of the product on the model because that will show through when you get to the painting stage. That's our wall all fixed, column all filled in, and our detail still in, intact. So now's a really good moment to call time on this particular video. It's great to see the church coming together now and coming alive. 
that in this summer heat, I am absolutely gagging for a drink, so I need some refreshments. But before I do, thank you so much for watching the series. Thank you so much for all your comments and feedback. It's been really gratefully received. Please make sure you press the bell icon and subscribe if you haven't already. I don't want you to miss out on any more future content. But for now, thank you so much. And until next week.